Welcome to another YouTube video. In this video I'm going to go through a nimble setup using the CLI. Now I'm not going to talk too much about the, about the details around the ifs and the whys and that's because I've done another video using a using the CLI slash GUI and talk more about that already so if you want to watch that video I'll put a link in the description below. So let's jump straight into this. So I'm going to type setup at the command prompt which is going to present me with a EULA. Now for the purposes of this demo I'm just going to quit out of the EULA however I do need to accept it in order to progress. So I'll say yes to that and as you'd expect you need a host name for the array and then a group name management IP address subnet mask and a default gateway next it's going to ask me for the domain name and at this point it's, it, it, the initial bits done and from this point I can then jump into a GUI to continue with the install if I wish. Now as I've already done that video I'm going to say no to that and I'm going to continue going through the CLI so you can see how that works. So DNS servers, now you need at least one DNS server, recommended a minimum of two just so you've got resilience there and from that point it now asks me about NTP where I can use a DNS host name or IP address if you wish. In my case I'm just going to continue with the IP address. The time zone, word of warning here, this is case sensitive so just bear that in mind if you get that wrong it won't let you progress to the next point in the install. However if you just press enter it will give you a list of the options and, and also how it's laid out in terms of case. So in my case I'm just going to keep pressing enter and I'm then going to type Europe forward slash London and hit enter and that's that part of the actual install done. I now need to move into the interfaces and on my array I've got six interfaces per controller, Ethernet interfaces. Now bear in mind your array might be slightly different um, in terms of hardware configuration so you might be presented with slightly different numbers of ports and options here. So let's continue and in my case I'm now on ETH1 and it's asking me for a subnet label for that interface and it is just that you say so it's a, a tag associated with that subnet so I'm going to call it management and because it's not heard of anything about this subnet before it asks a few more questions around that so in my case it wants a, a subnet for it which I'm going to give it as 192.168.153.0 and it's a slash 24 subnet. Now the next part it needs to understand is what sort of traffic is traversing this this subnet. Is is it management or is it data? And when we talk about data, I mean that as in storage data traffic. So in my case, it's going to be management as per my tag. And I'm going to use a standard 1500 MTU. Next, we move on to ETH2, which again I'm going to use as management, so I've got some resilience there in that in that subnet. And because I've already defined the details around the management subnet, it doesn't ask any further questions around that. It jumps straight into E3. So for my case, E3 and E4, I'm going to use as iSCSI data. 
So let's give it the tag iSCSI hyphen data. And because it doesn't know anything about this subnet tag, it's asking me the same questions above. So can I provide a subnet for that? So let's do that. And again, I'm using a slash 24, just uh, 192.168.253.0 in this case. And we're using this for iSCSI data, so we define that port as a data port. And I'm going to use a standard 1500 MTU again. Typo, my fault there. Now ETH4, again, as I've said, I'm using this for storage. So I scuzzy data, and it already knows about that, so it's not asking me any further questions. Now, in this example, ETH5 and ETH6, I'm not going to put any configuration against them. They're, I'm going to leave them unconfigured. So if I just press enter, it'll skip them and leave them as un unconfigured ports. However, if you wish to configure them at a later date, you can do. There's nothing stopping you changing that configuration. So it's moved back here now to ETH3. Nick E3, and the reason it's done that is because I've defined that as a data port. Now, each port assigned to data needs an underlying IP address, and that's what it's asking me here. So that's what I'm going to do. And same again for E4. And then there's a discovery IP. It's a floating IP or a virtual IP, sometimes known as, but, but Nimble call it a discovery IP. And that's overarching the IPs, and that, and that just is there really to um, automate connections, iSCSI connections, and make, make it ease of configuration when presenting it up to a, 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 a host. So in my case, I'm going to use 192.168.253.10. Now, support IPs. So these are diagnostic IPs, support IPs that are used and assigned to each controller. And these are sat on the management subnet. So I'm going to use 192.168.153.11 for controller A. Oops. And dot 12 for controller B. Now, at this point, the initial install is complete. It should come back with just a com command prompt, and there we have it. So what, what, one thing to note here is when you've gone through this install, you have configured the, the, the subnets as single IP address zones. And, and again, I've got a bit more on that in the other video that, in, in the link below. So if you want to check that out, please do. So that's all I'm going to go through today. Thanks for watching.